numbered by uh, sequential number and name of the presenter. If it is not first time when you see Microsoft window, just yeah. So I'm going to be talking about non-adiabatic coupling of electronic states. Um, so I guess this is the theory. Um, that's probably going to explain it better than I will verbally. So unless anybody has any major complaints about that, I'm probably just going to move on. You can tell a couple of words. OK. So just I guess. Inter interpretation. Yeah. So for me. When I'm thinking about non-adiabatic coupling, it's easier to think about what it is that you're ignoring when you're taking an adiabatic approximation, which basically just assumes that there's no connectedness between the electronic states and the ionic motion, or the uh, nuclear motion, to be more specific. Um, so whenever you're taking any non-adiabatic couplings, you're essentially, you're actually considering how your nuclear motion is actually moving and messing with your electronic states. and I guess, like you said earlier, ruining the orthogonality and causing different spatial overlaps in time. Um, and I just took that equation straight out of one of the uh, the things that you sent in one of those emails. I don't know who wrote it, I guess. There was okay. a name on there. And uh, where are coordinates from molecular dynamics that Daniel has computed or taught us how to uh, compute? That would be the big R, I guess, in both And where is your time? The T. But that's anything else, but yeah, but no luck. Okay, uh, probably you need to just yeah, yeah, kind of you. Coordinates here: one electronic small r and one is a big one, right? Yeah, yeah, that uh, so notation is a little confusing. In a way, how is it written? You take. I I think what they're assuming is that you have all. You just your... overlap. You just overlap two Kansham orbitals at yes. moment t and at moment t plus delta t. Right. But this dependence stays only on the nuclear uh, time dependence part. Yes. So the little r, I would imagine, is just whatever point in the space you're looking at. And then these are, you know, the set of all of So your, your electronic convert. degrees of freedom don't don't change with time? They don't depend on temperature, on, 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 temperature, on time? Uh, they, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, okay, they, they would have a time dependence through this, um, I would imagine, because you could determine your electronic state based on your ionic positions, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, technically, you have the time dependence in there, you so would then your technically, you kind of thinking that your position of nucleus is kind of a snapshot. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it's fixed. At that moment of time, right. and it's not really moving because they are very slow. Yeah. But you are still, of course, in, including that your electronic degrees of freedom is still time dependent, right? And you're kind of solving this this equation, mm -hmm. which which you have this delta t in the front and so on, as a dependence for electronic degrees of freedom. Let's say that last part one more time for me. The something about the electronic degrees of freedom. I missed a couple words. In, in other words, your uh, r, well, your your wave function yeah. dependent on a r with the index i, right? Yeah. And the wave function dependent on a r with the index j, right? Mm -hmm. They are not orthogonal. Because right. otherwise, if you don't have time dependency for your r, and r is exactly the same, well, I mean, yeah, they have yeah, to be. They, they have to be. All. They have to be. Uh, they have to be orthogonal, right? Right. Which means if they have different indexes, they then this zero. integral should should go get, goes to zero. Yep. But they are not because technically you're taking them at different moment of time. Right. right? Yeah. Because we've got. And that's why right. this overlap will have some some values, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But but nuclear, I can see that like really fixed at this moment of time. Yes. Or at least, I, yeah, as far as I'm aware, yes. <laughs> I would say I would put it probably backward, like your nuclear is not time dependent, but your electronic uh, degrees of freedom should be time dependent Okay. in this equation. But if you understand it, it's fine. Yeah. Just the way how you define it. You, you right. can't answer it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that would probably make the notation. Uh, yeah, I'd have to think about how to write that. 
Um, okay, so after you have run your molecular dynamics, um, I guess you don't explicitly have to make a duplicate directory, but I would highly recommend it so that you can't mess anything up in your original molecular dynamics uh, directory. So um, just make a new directory, copy everything from your MD directory into that one. Um, if you have any files that start with a lowercase p, just get rid of those with uh, remove p star. It shouldn't affect anything because none of the important files start with a lowercase p. Um, and then you're going to need to edit the postcard file. <coughs> Excuse me, the postcard file. Um, well, before you go into postcard file, yep. right? So it looks like you don't have wave cars on these directories as an output. Am okay. I right? Oh, it's right there. But it's only once. But again, you run dynamics. It should be time dependent then. So your wave car has information on each of your time scale along the trajectory? Or it's just a wave car which is taken at the very last moment of your trajectory? I actually don't know exactly what the wave car has. It's a binary file. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I would imagine that. Our car has a lot of the vital information. You can take a look on the size okay. of the wave card. I mean, yeah. just cu like, I, I should be curious about it. Mm. So you can take a look on the, on the size of the wave card when you create it after the, after the first step of the dynamics. Yeah, and if the size is not increased, yeah. doesn't matter was it binary or not. If the size is exactly the same after you'd run some thousand or how many steps. Right, then you're so not clearly it just size. rewriting your wave card at each mm -hmm. moment of time. And I think this is what is that what I, is it doing? Yeah, I, I think it's that's not collecting I, information on a wave function at each moment of time because then your file would be enormously be, yeah, huge in size. It's just rewriting your wave card at each moment of time. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we so you, would you recommend to use this wave card, save it, is it really useful? Because you said like, oh, you have to duplicate everything from your files. What about this file? You shouldn't explicitly need that. Well, no, you, okay. So Later on, you will need a wave car file. So but that will late, be later on, actually, we have to recalculate this wave car. Right, yeah, and you need stage. to recalculate it every Then time. the question is, why do we recalculate and why are we not using it right away? So why to do it once? So, Spending time for nothing then. There should be some tricks there then. Why are we doing what exactly twice? Why are we not using this wave card? Why we uh, actually have another step to run the VASP and recalculate the wave cards when we calculate non elevated couplings? Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. That. Uh, that oh, we use actually, these wave cards. Yeah, that seems like that should be a shortcut. That this is your after running viable. MD, right? So right, this is just yeah. you. This is what kind of part which uh, Daniel was discussing, mm -hmm. right? So you run your molecular dynamics, you got all these files. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah and, we not, and then you're saying you copy everything, you're renaming your postcard, I guess this would be on your next slide. But mm -hmm. uh, actually, you're renaming your concard probably, right? Not postcard. Concard to postcard. Yeah. You use concard for, for the next step, not postcard. So concard has a last. Right, yeah, that's, it's a postcard. And webcard yeah. also the web function oh. of the last step. Postcard has your initial geometry, but you need yes, concards which include all information. I believe that we actually want the postcard and not the concard for this part. Um, let's, let's not, confuse, let's not confuse each other. Tell us first how many slides do you have? Uh, like 10. Okay, uh, before going through the slides, give us in one word or two words, approximate content of each slide. So... And this is slide number three? Yeah, number something two? like that. Number yeah, three. this is like the very beginning of what you actually do to calculate your couplings. Because um, this has turned into a multi-step process every time I've tried to do it. Um, so, okay, so you run molecular dynamics. Then you want to create all of your like p x x x files where x x x is whatever number. So okay, okay, good. And then, um, and you will explain how you do it. But mm -hmm. then, yeah. So after you have all those, I guess I wrote a script on here that I'm going to mention um, that uh, if you have your molecular dynamics separated into multiple runs because you couldn't do it all in 48 hours, which is what happened every time for me, um, then you need to rename hundreds of these p whatever files. So that script basically, and then I'll make a separate directory where you actually do all the coupling computations and run those. So scripts. about the coupling computations, yeah. And what is the uh, connection between this pxxx file and coupling computations? 
the coupling computations use those PXXX files, which are essentially they're the exact same thing as a postcard, but at whichever ionic step. Uh huh. Um, and 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 now and now please uh, tell uh, what is the connection between PXXX files and a uh, question that Daniel was curious about. Uh, which oh question? crap! Which question Can you was that? The question? Yeah. <laughs> Daniel was trying to answer which information uh, his, oh. mo his molecular dynamics is funneled towards computation of couplings. Yeah. So after you run molecular dynamics, you do have all of the information on where all of your nuclei are at every step in time, and so each like p x x x file is a snapshot of your system at that step in time. Um, so we are going to explicitly make a separate file for every app next step. Um, and that is coming up next, I guess. So what you, what, which, eyebrow, which number of iBrion you used? What's that? Which, which number you used in iBrion keywords? Uh, or monitor is, is that the one that tells you, or that tells it which things to compute, I guess? I think that one was two, if I'm not mistaken. If that's the one, this is I, I always have to look at the, I can't, memory is not my strong suit, so I always have to just look at them on the wiki. Um, but returning I, back to my first question, so okay. do we need or, do, or don't we, we need this wave car? This wave car Anyone we can do not can, need. We do not need. We do not well, need. Well, if you rerun your molecular dynamic part, like this was what said, like you, you run it like several times with mm -hmm. interruptions. So after you've done your first, I don't know how many, femtosecond, mm -hmm. would you use this wave card to restart your molecular dynamics? Would anyone use this wave card to restart no. molecular dynamics? No? Why not? I guess. It will I, save you a lot of time because oh, okay. anytime when you run DFT, you start yeah. with a guessing wave for function. Oh, but you don't need to yeah, guess this, right, if you have exactly this one. You so okay. if you have interruptions in molecular dynamics, and if you have a wave curve mm -hmm. saved and created successfully, then you might you as well just throw that in the next directory. Use it as an input file to restart it in the next directory okay. and restart it. You save a lot of time with yeah. this. However, you cannot use this wave card for the non-adiabatic couplings calculations. Right. Why? Because uh, this is only one step of like a thousand. Oh, you can so it's re not really you, you can run it and resave it, right? Like save it after like after from one foot from the second one is created, you can call it wave card one, then it will be wave card two, and thousand wave cards you can probably save them. But we don't do it. Any reason? Anyone knows why? You cannot use this wave card for calculation of the non-adiabatic non couplings, or actually for calculation of just regular electronic structure calculations. Anyone knows? No? Have you been ever trying to use this? John Fogel knows. John? Do I don't know, does he hear us? It, it, it is a very simple and provocative question. Most of you know the answer. Does we it have to do with it, like so spin restriction? Huh? We don't usually write it. That's why I never used it. Yeah. Um, any, any, any ideas? Does it have to do with like spin restriction versus like not no, linear no. spin or anything like that? Um, it's so. dynamics. So it is. It is not the optimal geometry. Geometry is very distorted, and yeah. it's only one snapshot, so it doesn't give you representative picture of the electronic structure. And yeah. One snapshot is not sufficient to get non adiabatic coupling because you need two uh, a lot of points, a lot of snapshots. And again, right. read the manual where they talk about uh, adiabatic, uh, just regular molecular adiabatic dynamics. Yeah. They have a recommendation there not to use the wave cars for the electronic structure. If like you run your dynamics, mm -hmm. then they recommend to restart, like you, you have your like, snapshots or coordinates, restart, recalculate if you need the electronic structure these specific snapshots. Okay. Don't use these wave cars because they are kind of projected to the new, so to speed up the calculations, mm -hmm. the wave card which is created at the last moment, yeah. It's actually having, it's not the real wave car corresponding to the electronic structure of this moment of time. Okay. They kind of project it, they kind of guess in it as a next step mm -hmm. due to the motion of nuclear. So it's actually not very accurate wave car in other words. Okay. And it's done for purpose because this way how they do it, it speed up the adiabatic dynamics. Yeah. But it will be not accurate for the electronic structure calculations. Okay. That's why if you need to, to get just wave functions 
for electronic structure with this specific geometry, right? You have to just do single point calculations okay. with the saved coordinates from yeah. your previous step, right? You can probably restart your calculation again using this wave card if you want to, but you cannot use it directly and uh, claim that this is your... Okay, so this would be a different wave card than I would get on like the thousandth iteration. When you do non dynamics, when, when, when you like, you will go to this non uh, couplings calculations, right? Because mm -hmm. there you also restart your uh, last calculations, starting with this P, P yeah. files, which has information on the coordinates, right? Okay. Yeah. So, and your settings, your postcard actually is different comparing to this uh, adiabatic dynamics. It's just regular electronic, electronic structure calculation uh, postcard with 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 a single single loop okay right w without really motion of nuclear yeah yeah because i i definitely do single point calculations later um, right yeah I'll, I'll ask you i guess something when i get to that point because yeah. but, but again the, the the practical point if you run in adiabatic dynamics it's a good idea to probably run it for shorter time because if you run it for thousands and then you break out you never really create this wave card maybe that's why you're not using it because if you run it for the whole period of time and usually you don't have enough wall time to finish it, right? Mm -hmm. So then if it's interrupted, then you never really create your wave card. So probably it makes sense to run it for whatever some reasonable time, like as, as much you can do for this uh, specific wall time you are running for your, uh, for your regular calculations. Create your wave card and then restart. Let's say you're doing 200 femtoseconds, then you restart from your 200, going from 201 to whatever next, 400 something, restart it with this wave card. Then it helps you to speed up the molecular dynamics calculations. Okay. But for non abetic couplings, this wave card are not very much useful at all. Okay. Cool. So, um, okay, so once you've made your uh, duplicate directory and you've copied everything into it, uh, you need to edit the postcard because some of the scripts are not written for this version of VASP. So the only thing that you need to do is just get rid of this line, because uh, all this information is already stored here, so it's just kind of redundant anyway, I guess. Um, Again, redundant back, you use this postcard from your adiabatic dynamics calculations, right? Yes. So this is exactly the format which you were using for adiabatic calculation, uh, molecular dynamics calculations? Yes, this would be the same postcard yeah. as up here. And again, you have to change it because now you're really not running for your kind of go in, we call it step two, when you're mm -hmm. really calculating non-adiabatic couplings, you restart your Gaussian, or Gaussian, you restart your VASP, but now you're not doing dynamics anymore, you run regular electronic structure calculations. Means you just optimize uh, self-consistently with this specific nuclear position, you self-consistently optimize the electronic wave function. And that's why you need to modify your postcard a little bit, because the formats are slightly different. Okay. Yeah. Cause I no no. As no, far no, no, as I know, no, no. Um, it is this is because the, uh, the this code for, script uh, is not written for this version of VASP. Convert. Yes. So this script is expecting this line to not exist, and so if this line is here, you just get a bunch of blank output. Then why is it here? It is the fact of the bus four and five only. Five then have one extra line in postcard format. But then why is it running for the name? But that clean that this script is written for bus four. So it is not about but calculation, it's about you have this line in your postcard for the dynamics and it's not a problem when you run dynamics with this line in a postcard. There is no problems at all. Yeah, there are. So, yeah, VASP uh, expects that we, line. We do use... Then why you need to wait, delete it? Wait, 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 wait. For um, this thing. <laughs> we do use latest version of VASP, number five. Yes. Which has different format of saving files. But in our repository, we do have a very good script that was written for the version number four that no one wants to change and update. And in order to apply the script results uh, coming out of version five, we one needs to uh, remove one line. Should I create the postcard differently? So I just so you, you make your own. In way. Thunder, we have only bus five, so we don't have that issue. Okay. Ah. We have all the same format. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So, okay, so when you try to run this script, if you just get a bunch of blank lines as output, that probably means that you didn't edit your postcard, so just go back, do that, and try to rerun the script. Um, if you get all of this going on as output, then that probably means it worked. Um, probably still a good idea to just look at one and make sure that you do actually have all the information that you need. Um, so, okay, so after you've done that, um, 
So for me, all of my molecular dynamics jobs took more than one run. So I had to break these into multiple directories. Um, and the script that I found was not working for me. It, uh, it would only work in certain cases, I guess. So um, what you can do is in your second directory, after you've done all the same steps that I just talked about, you're going to get a bunch of, you know, like P00. Is, uh, what, uh, what file is it you're showing? Uh, this is a script that I wrote. Ah, okay. Yeah. But the files, the, the files these, are PXX. Yes, yeah, these are the PXXX files. But right? how you so create your PXX and so on? Where did you get script. your PXX? Huh? Uh, you run this script and this will give well, you well, the PXXX. What is your input for this uh, script? There isn't one. Huh? You don't need to give it. Well, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, it, this is wrong. Uh, the, this script doesn't need explicit input in the command line, but it right. reads some files. But it files. reads the files from... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So which files... Yeah. Which files yeah. I, I thought you meant like what... No, no, no. Which files <laughs> does the script read? What do you uh, need to run? Like, let's say, if I have an empty directory mm -hmm. and run the script, what does it tell me? I uh, would probably I'll just complain and say... Yeah, yeah we'll, have we'll, what you we'll need. stop and how, say how something like, you can it read the file and give you the name of the file? I right? would imagine outcar and maybe another one. Outcar and postcar. Okay, yeah. That's why you have to edit the postcar. And the outcar or outcar. Oh, right, yeah, true that. Hmm? Oh. Because hexcar is easy. Hexcar has all the postcar formula. See, Which it, it is named outcar to postcar. No, I'm saying, I'm saying if you do that, like, is that wrong? No, no, there is a really redundant information that is repeated in both outcar and x.car. They have repeated information. Outcar has yeah, everything. x.car so has but only since coordinates. Since we need only a coordinate for this one, I mean, uh, then we can just take it from x.car. Yeah. There's a pretty simple in that yes. case, taking from the outcar. So but you, you, you're, you're you, going you, to, you, you to you tell how you do this procedure in your talk number seven. Uh, <laughs> your, your number seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will. I wait. have just a couple of lines, Python code, and you get everything from the. Uh, Good. Uh, Very you nice. can do that. that okay. Really make more cool. Okay. It looks like we have two alternatives right now. You can get the same. Like first of all, you need input files, right? And this yeah, is yeah, postcard and outcard. Or in this alternative, instead of outcard, you can use x.car. Mm -hmm. Because outcard has everything. Right. Energies, uh, yeah, even, yeah, even positions, everything, yeah. right? Yeah. But x.car has only positions. So to create in your like the goal of using this file is to create this p dot yeah, the p files, whatever. which you will be used for non diabetic calculations, right. right? And you either like you have a script which working with huge big outcar file. Mm -hmm. Jamet has own script which is working with x dot car. X, X that car, yeah, yeah. Uh, which has the same information but just only on coordinates, right? Yeah. So two alternatives, both might work, uh, but the script which you are using probably works only without cars. If if yeah, no, if, yeah. if you if you use this this right script right for car. kind of and don't have out car, it also will give you the error, right? Mm -hmm. So what is inside this p zero zero one p zero zero two files? What is inside this file? So they generate. It, it's 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 an uh, answer it's to question of Daniel, or question uh, that Daniel is interested. In. It's the exact same format as a postcard file. But, but physical meaning, what exactly is saved in this the file? The positions of your uh, new positions at each time step. Moment of time. So the yeah. index at the na at the, in the name of the file is a time step. Right. Yeah. So this is before you've done any ionic steps. This is the first ionic step, second ionic step, and so on. And why? Let's say why not to have. Makes sense. Yeah. Why not to have p dot like you have x x x? I think in your case probably four x, right? No, real four is this four. P is three. It's three. Yeah. Okay. So why not like if it's just zero, one, two, three, four, and so on? Why not having one, two, three, four? Why you need three decimal kind of? Why you you put in zeros, right? Like at the moment zero, you have all three zeros, right? I'm not putting zeros. The script does that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand. So I, I, you don't do it by hand. That's why you actually write the script. They're padded for whatever reason. But do you know the reason? Like wh wh why why to reason. worry about it? Any any ideas? Why we have this special format for naming 000, 000, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, two? Process in the next one because the script, I it's don't know all other languages start and numbering start will be zero. Any any ideas? Anyone working with Fortran, writing codes on Fortran? Yeah, Fortran is starting zero. Fortran is actually very very picky about the text variables, mm -hmm. and when you read these files. Because the next step is written in a Fortran for the non coupling. Mm -hmm. And when it's read these files, 
it's actually is very very picky about this uh, say, number of uh, decimal digits. place digits yeah. in a text yeah. format. So it first it reads it as a text file and then converts into numerical mm -hmm. format. Right, it's expecting that. If you, if you that have different lengths, yeah. if you go. However, stage. if instead of like you use probably the same scripts right as we use. Uh, for, for running novelty couplings, but if you write your own scripts, let's say not on a Fortran, but on some more advanced and more modern language, then you probably can completely redo this, uh, well, this right, thing yeah, and don't this, worry about this yeah, zero, zero, zero and so on. You shouldn't on. explicitly need this for any real reason other than something requires it at some point down the line. I mean, yeah, it, anyway. <laughs> but it's, it's doing for you so good, now you know why it's doing it in this specific format. Yeah. So, okay, so if you need to run molecular dynamics in more than one directory, um, you're going to, I guess I didn't show it here, that, yeah, it would have taken way too much space. Um, in your second run of molecular dynamics, you're going to get P00, P001, P002, all that again. So you're going to need to shift all those, essentially. So what I did is I wrote this script, rename PXX, um, so that uh, all you need to do is just give it the first input that should appear in your new directory, and it will rewrite all of the p whatever files for you. Um, so if that script fails, like it did in this case, usually, um, so basically what this did is it rewrote p000 to the first index and then it quit. The issue is usually that you have some other file that's not one of the pxxx files um, in your directory. So just get rid of all those, try to just get new healthy p whatever files, and then rerun the script. No, I don't get you. What is mean healthy p? And What's that? What do you mean by healthy p? Just a second. Healthy p. Am I right? Like, I mean, you, said you break, healthy. like, to run your, like, you have, let's suppose, you have thousand uh, p, mm -hmm. right? Named from zero to thousand. Yep. And you saying that, of course, you cannot, and at each moment, for each P, you have to run BASP. So you have to run BASP thousand times when yeah. you calculate, no, but actually twice more because you, uh, uh, around thousand times. Uh, around, uh, uh, along yeah, the plus days. one. Yeah. Plus one, yes, not twice, <laughs> just plus one. So, plus two. Plus two. Plus two. Heating the and then thousand times. Oh, no, no, yeah. I mean, for, just for this, for this case. Okay, zero to nine, nine, nine. Uh, yeah. But you're saying that you cannot, of course, just run it as a single job and do it thousand times of VASP calculations, right? So you have to break it into the pieces. Mm -hmm. And let's say you put it like from zero to 50, from 51 to whatever, 100, yeah. 101, 150, and so on, right? This mm -hmm. is kind of the goal. And then you rename your, like in each, like you create in these directories for, for, for snaps, for, how to say, for, for regions, right? Mm -hmm. or, or time intervals. And then if each this directory you rename your p files so they will go from zero to fifty. So before you had from zero to thousand, now you have how many two hundred uh, directories with fifty guys, yep. and now your p is going from zero to fifty in each directory. Right. This is what your script is that, doing. Uh, well, Not so really. that's the original problem. What the script does is takes okay. So your your first MD run has zero to fifty, right? Your second MD run will have 51 to 100. So what the script will do is it will, okay, sorry. So after running this script, you're gonna have, what, like 20 directories that all have P000 through P50. So you need to go zero to 50, 51 to 100. Oh, it's okay, now I understand. So you yeah. run molecular dynamics in different directories. Yeah. So that's why yeah, you run you in each directory, you run and... your uh, your script for creating this P. So now you have name numbering of P in each directory is the same. But now you want to really make it from zero to thousand rather than right. 200 times from zero to 50. Yeah, because if exactly. you have everything in the same directory, you're going to end okay. up overriding Good. everything. Okay. And that's yeah. just dangerous. <laughs> is it clear or not? Why he needs it? Well, I was texting. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Calculate so it overlaps of weight cars. So if your indices are mismatched, so you would be uh, like overlapping your first step with your hundred oh. steps possibly. So because that's initially why you don't have any web car is guessing the web car, so that web car maybe not hundred yeah, percent. It doesn't know there's a previous run. Yeah. So right. Yeah. Just, yeah. The script is always going to give you zero to however many steps. So you if you overlap five step, you can assume that. After five steps, it's cut. Yeah. 
If it fails again, let me know so I yes. can debug the script. I have not yeah. been able to break it other than doing stuff like this. Or I guess if you have this situation and you removed explicitly this file, it would probably also break because you have this weird jump right there. Um, that's my recommend, just rerunning the outcar and postcar because that takes like five seconds. Um, so yeah, just let me know if this doesn't work for you, if you ever need to use it. Um, I'd be happy to debug it. Well, not happy, but I would like <laughs> Tolerant. <laughs> um, okay, so after you have all of your PEXXX files, um, you need to make a coupling directory. So you, what you want to do is copy the in-car, pot-car, and k-points from your uh, geometry optimization. Um, edit your in-car so that you only do a single point calculation, otherwise you're never going to finish and actually that would mess with your data as well. <laughs> um, so after you've done that, you're going to need the scripts in this same directory. So these are all in the bin. Um, you're going to need overlap.exe for sure. You're going to need whichever B script is relevant to what you're trying to do. So standard would be for spin restricted, MCL would be for non-collinear. I think there's like one other, one or two other ones in there. Um, and then you're going to need uh, a script that will actually like request your processor hours. So. Um, you need to make an uh, in-car and a energy pop, or sorry, input overlap and energy pop uh, for the overlap script. Uh, those are just the same as they usually are. So is it designed for Edison only? What's that? Is it de designed only for Edison? Because you said the uh, requesting processor or something like that. Oh, there's uh, they have a script There's there. the same thing except Cori regular coupling. And you can just make one of these on your own if you want to from a different one. Um, what does it do actually? So, okay, so actually, so uh, this isn't super clear on here, I guess. Uh, this <laughs> is the uh, Edison regular coupling one. This is the B script file. So what this will do is you tell the computer cluster, you know, what kind of job you're doing, all that. And then instead of just running VASP, you call this script. And this script is what actually runs VASP. So... Uh, I guess the important things to... Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, actually. I'm not sure exactly why, but this script only works for me on Edison. It does not work on Cori for whatever reason. Um, I don't know why that is. Did I guess. the part module? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> um, okay, so on these files, the things that you're going to need to edit are all in the boxes, which got really mangled on the... Uh, um, paper print-offs, I guess, so just let me know and I can email you a copy of this thing if you wanted to look at it. So in your uh, Edison regular coupling or Cori regular coupling, uh, you're going to request however many nodes. So right here and right here in the orange boxes, I believe, um, you need to make sure that those line up with however many nodes you're requesting. And I just put those right there for quick and easy reference. Um, so right here, you just need to tell it what the first pxxx file is that you're going to manipulate, or run VASP on, I guess. And then up in here, you just need to make sure that you have the appropriate looping conditions. So if this is zero, just set this to one. Uh, if this is like 57, set this to 58. Um, and then just make sure that it will actually end at the appropriate time, depending on how many pxxx files you have. Um, and I guess in this little line right here, just make sure that this is actually the file that you copied and you know, you're modifying right here, otherwise this isn't gonna work. So after you've done that, um, just copy all of the pxxx files into your coupling directory and then uh, just run sbatch on your Edison regular coupling or Cori regular coupling, whatever it is that, uh, whatever file it is that you have there, just make sure that you run sbatch on that file. And that's it. Then you have couples. Oh, uh, th that's it? Yeah. Last slide? Okay, let's thank London. Oh, okay, let's go one slide, one slide back. So uh, please point your laser pointer on the uh, near the orange box, overlap exe. Lower, 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 one line lower here. Yes. Yep. So tell us more, just your vision, your interpretation, what this uh, code does. The overlap.exe. Yes. Yes. Uh, I guess it uh, 
it makes these OS strength files, so it, it actually does the computation of your couplings. Um, so what, what, what is the input and what is the output for this uh, code? Oh, Even if um, it is not explicitly mentioned, but what it reads from file and what it writes into file. Uh, it uh, takes your electronic states from your wave car. How many wave cars? Uh, two at a time. So like zero and one, one and two, two and three, the, the two adjacent time steps. At least I would think. And then it basically calculates this using... So this overlap exe, uh, dot exe uh, implements this equation? Yes. For a given time step? Right. And your uh, phi at time t is wave car? Yes. And your phi at t plus delta t is wave car new or whatever? Or, yeah, yeah. Wave car and wave car old. Car. Yeah. Okay. And which file can, can go to the equation? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oops. So this V sub I J. Yep. Where in which file this uh, V is saved? Um, that would be. Let's see. Next line. Should be and in next the line OS of strength. Uh, Should and if you think longer. Or master equation. If you think uh, even longer. Couple. Yes. <laughs> So it should be matrix, uh, like with orbital indices, skipped like square matrix yep. from first to last uh, orbital or from first active to last active orbital. Okay. Yep. And then uh, in your script there should be renaming of the coupling into yeah. coupling with time index, right? Right. M yeah. So coupling it, it moves into whatever your period. added new decimal oh. is. Okay. I was wondering why it's moving coupling to coupling. No, 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 there is a red, uh, yeah, it's, uh, red uh, font which is needed. don't show up oh, super okay. well in here. Yeah, that's me. Is it better? Yes. Yep, it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, you also don't need to uh, have this one with the initial zeros, because um, the printf statement handles that for you, so, yeah. More questions to London? Daniel, you are the target audience for this talk. Uh, it's no. your chance to ask. I understood most of it, but the part... Um, Next week you repeat everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the only thing that got a little little overwhelming was whenever you had all those P1000 files. Uh, I, yeah. I, how many files did you have right there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, files yeah. Right when, when it's all said and done, you should have... Well, for me anyway, I'm doing a thousand steps, so yeah, you got like zero to 999. So it's, it's just a lot. And then this uh, script actually makes a file for every intermittent step, I guess, for an OS strength, for master equation, for coupling. So after you run it, this directory gets massive. Because you have like four <coughs> files for every one of these steps now. Jonathan, you wanted to ask something? What is the wave car world you just mentioned? Where did it get from? The wave car? Wave car world. Oh. I saw it now for and wave car world. So, okay, so you basically just run BASP on the first uh, PXXX file that you have. And then when you go through in the loop, you basically just add one to that. Um, you move that old wave car to wave car old. Um, and then you're going to rerun VASP, except at the next ionic step, I guess, using the next postcard. Um, so then after you do that, you're going to have wave car again. And then when you repeat this loop, you're going to end up replacing that with wave car old. 